I recently read through Mark Manson's The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Damn. Oversimplified summary is it aims to teach us that when we worry about everything, we don't have time to worry about anything. In the first chapter, called Don't Try, self-improvement, striving for success, trying to better yourself is presented as a useless endeavor that will always fail, because trying means you already don't believe you're good enough. Manson reveals what he calls the uncomfortable truth. One day, you and everyone you love will die, and beyond a small group of people for an extremely brief period of time, little of what we do will matter. With this, the first chapter adopts a nihilistic outlook towards everything that we do. Enter Rick Sanchez the alcoholic, self-loathing partner to Morty Smith on the show Rick and Morty, a man who would agree very much with Mark Manson's interpretation of the meaning of life, or lack thereof. Throughout Rick and Morty, Rick Sanchez is frequently referred to as the smartest man in the universe, having invented interdimensional travel, a flying spaceship, etc. But his intelligence and knowledge that his universe doesn't matter only encourages him to live a more selfish lifestyle. Because of this nihilistic approach to his life, he often puts himself and his family at risk with his reckless behavior. Deep down, Rick does care about his family and wants to be a better father to his daughter Beth, but doesn't try, because he knows deep down it won't matter in the grand scheme of things. Then there's Jerry, the father of the Smith household and husband to Rick's daughter Beth. Jerry holds the opposite view of Rick's nihilism. Jerry is a character who is frequently mocked by his own family, belittled by his own mediocrity, reminded constantly that his life is meaningless because of Rick's antics, yet he wants to be a better father. He wants to be a better husband. He tries. And there's no better comparison to Rick and Jerry's polar opposite approach to life than the ending to season 2's autoerotic assimilation. As the episode comes to a close, it's clear to see why Rick's past relationships haven't worked. He is self-centered and careless, unable to form meaningful connections with the people who love him because he doesn't believe in love. And by the end of the episode, Jerry, the character who tries to be a great father and tries to be a great husband, blissfully rids his driveway of weeds, while the smartest man in the universe, the man who can do everything but doesn't care about anything, tries to kill himself. Nihilism is an unproductive and potentially dangerous outlook on life. Rick's depression offers us a look into the ramifications of this lifestyle and following Manson's advice of not trying. And as the co-creator of Rick and Morty, Dan Harmon, puts it, the knowledge that nothing matters, while accurate, gets you nowhere. The planet is dying, the universe is cooling, the sun is exploding, the farther back you pull, the more that truth will endure. But when you zoom in on Earth, you zoom in on a family, you zoom in on a childhood, an experience, a couple, you see all these things that matter. We get this fleeting chance to take part in an illusion that is, I love my girlfriend, I love my dog, I love my son, my daughter. How is that not better? So if you can push past Mark Manson's uncomfortable truth, you realize that every moment is the most important moment. Every moment becomes the meaning of life. That breakup that made you stronger, that sibling you simultaneously can't stand yet would do anything for, that time when a friend needed you do the most and you greeted them with a warm smile and a shoulder to cry on. It's these moments that give us purpose. It's these moments that matter. It's a reason to try. Your life is a gift, but it's up to you to decide what you'll do with it.